If you thought Inception was confusing, wait till you see this. Now as we all know, Christopher Nolan is just a great director. He's bringing in some of the most thought-provoking but also badass films over the last number of years. He's particularly responsible for one of my very favourite cinematic villains of all time, hint hint, and he's also responsible for one of my very favourite movies of all time, hint hint. So in that case, I do have quite a bit to thank him for. And going into Interstellar, I was hoping Christopher Nolan would also be responsible for one of the best films of 2014. Was he responsible? The answer is pretty much yeah. So basically as you all know Interstellar is Christopher Nolan's new film. Basically Earth, it's in the future, it's all desolate, all the food's gone and the basically humanity is running out of resources and basically we think we're all going to die on Earth. So basically Michael Caine comes up with this plan with uh, NASA, who's actually a secret organisation in this film, to send this team of astronauts through this newly discovered wormhole and find another planet in another galaxy to live on. Now leading this team is obviously Matthew McConaughey and he has to leave behind his family to go off into interstellar travel and things like that. Now I'm a big believer in no spoilers so I ain't spoiling shit for you guys but um it's really hard to talk about this film without spoiling it for you so let's just talk about some of the good stuff first of all the one thing I need to praise straight off the bat is the score the musical score for this film is phenomenal it has that like little like that twanky kind of spare tune like dun 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 if you got what I mean like and when you when you listen to that music and look at all the stars you're just like oh my god that's just that's just awesome yeah it's safe to say that Hans Zimmer and Christopher Nolan films are a very good match Another thing I loved about this film were the special effects. The special effects were just insane. I was going to say out of this world, but that just sounds too cheesy and too corny, but they are really out of this world. Especially the scene where they go through the wormhole. Holy shit! That stuff is just some of the most visually impressive things I've seen in a film all year. And I've seen Godzilla throw monsters into buildings. I've seen Guardians of the Galaxy try and protect the galaxy and things like that. But this stuff, when they were going through the wormhole, that was just insanely badass. Another thing I'm sh I need to compliment this film on is the fact that this film is on for 2 hours and 45 minutes. And for some reason, it didn't feel like it was on for that long. It felt like it was on for about two hours ten tops. I mean it's good if a film it doesn't feel like it's on for as long as it is. It's like The Wolf of Wall Street. That film to me when I first watched it did not feel like it was on for three hours. I mean it just went by like that. And if it, and if that's the case that must have been the film's entertaining. This film is very entertaining uh, to a degree. So if it's on for less time then that's a good thing and a big compliment to the film and that's why I really compliment this film. Now like I said at the intro this film yeah you're gonna need a lot of brain power to keep up with this film because it is I want to say confusing, it is confusing, you're like, what? <laughs> but I'm not going to spoil it for you because if I told you why it's confusing, it would just ruin the thing for you completely and pretty much I won't be able to tell you what it means because I'm still a bit confused by it. But I'm not saying because it was confusing that it made the film automatically bad. I still was thoroughly enjoyed by this film. I'm just saying there are things in this film that a lot of people will not understand. I mean, it deals with interstellar travel, going through wormholes, time, relativity, and things like that. So some people will be completely brain frazzled by the things in this movie. But I, well, I was one of them. But some people will either like it or they won't like it. And people who don't like it will probably use that as an excuse to say, "Oh, this film's bad. It's all the hype. It's not Christopher Nolan's best film." And that's just ridiculous because I. I don't think it's Christopher Nolan's best film, but it's one of his best films, in my personal opinion. It's his most confusing and most and his most thought-provoking film, in my personal opinion. I think it, it it's more thought-provoking than Inception, personally for me, and it's also, in my personal opinion, more powerful as well. A more and it's more ambitious. I know people have heard, said that a lot about this, but it is really ambitious. It's probably one of the most ambitious films I've seen in a while. Probably the most ambitious film this year, actually. I know people are like, oh, Gravity was a bit more ambitious. I've not seen Gravity. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, it's great, it's a masterpiece. A lot of people say it's rubbish, you shouldn't watch it. So I'm just divided on Gravity. I've never seen it. But um, I don't know. I'll, I'll, when I watch Gravity, I'll make my own personal mind up about which one's better out of that and Interstellar. And sometimes in this film, even though it is ambitious, you do think sometimes it is a bit too ambitious, if you get what I mean. Like, it goes for all this stuff, you're like, can they really do that? Is that, I mean, is that like in the reach of possibility to do that? 
but I didn't let that really confuse me that much. I didn't let it drive me away from the film. I still I kept watching. I was like, right, I'll just roll with it. So that's what kept me watching, and I'm glad I stayed and watched the rest of it, which I don't usually walk out of films. I mean, I've never walked out of a film like ever. Actually, no, Alvin and the Chipmunks too. I walked out of that because that was I'm not even gonna say. But apart from that, I've not walked out of a film ever. I mean, if it's rubbish, I'll still wait to the end to see if it can like if it can redeem itself. And this film completely does redeem itself. It's very entertaining. It's very watchable. Uh, well, when I say watchable, I mean it's watchable for engaged audiences. I mean, if you're the kind of person who sits there and watches a film for the explosions, gunfights, and you don't really care about characters, drama, how the film's made, the techniques, and everything like that, you'll probably, the odds are, you'll not like this film at all. But if you like watching films simply for the film itself and how the film is as a film, and not what you are going to compare it to over anything else or expectations or anything like that then this film is definitely, definitely worth a shot. So in the end, Interstellar, it had great characters, it had great acting, really great special effects, a really, really great musical score. Um, it, it was a bit confusing at times, like, does that make sense, does this make sense? But if you're like me, you might just power through it and you're just going to stick out to the very end and the ambition in the end more or less pays off. It is very watchable, and would I say it's one of the best films of the year? It would be on the top ten list somewhere. I mean, I do, I do think this will be on the top ten best movie list of the year at the end of the year, in my opinion. So, is it Christopher Nolan's best film? Mm -hmm. It's one of his best, but in the end, I am going to give Interstellar an eight. So, Interstellar, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Put them in the comments below, and to subscribe to me and see more videos, click right here. <laughs>